The 2023 Royal Rumble has come and gone. I'm going to talk all about it right here in this video. What is up, guys, and welcome back to the No Nation Wrestling YouTube channel. Before we get into this video, I want to remind you that every single No Nation Wrestling video is available on audio platforms linked down below. But yeah, the Royal Rumble is last night. Overall, two thumbs up from me. I very much enjoyed the show. I know some people um, weren't uh, too thrilled with the Royal Rumble matches themselves. I thought they were better than last year's, and especially the men's one, uh, you know, the women's one, not so much, but the wet, but the uh, men's one, I was on the edge of my seat uh, the whole time, just anticipating what was going to happen in the end, because obviously that was a big question mark heading into the show, probably the biggest question mark heading into the show was who was going to win the men's Royal Rumble, which of course we found out and we will talk about, but overall, I really enjoyed the show, um, you know, the Mountain Dew pitch black match, which we'll talk about, didn't overstay its welcome, uh, Bianca and Alexa didn't go too long, luckily, and the main event, and the aftermath of the main event, was obviously a lot to discuss. So we're going to get into everything right here in this video, kicking off with the 30-man Royal Rumble match. So to run down everybody in this match, even though you already know, but just a refresher, uh, we had Gunther, the Intercontinental Champion, coming in at number one, Sheamus at number two, The Miz, Kofi Kingston, Johnny Gargano, Xavier Woods, Karrion Cross coming in at number seven, Chad Gable, Drew McIntyre at number nine, Santos Escobar, Angelo Dawkins, Brock Lesnar in at number 12. That might be, besides what he came out at number one a few years ago might be the earliest he's ever uh, uh came out as a, a surprise we knew he was going to come in at number one a few years ago um and what was it 2020 um uh, brock lesnar at number 12 bobby lashley at number 13 baron corbin at 14 seth rollins at 15 otis at 16 ray mysterio was supposed to be at 17 we'll talk about that uh dominic mysterio at 18 uh, then we had Elias, Finn Balor. We had a surprise in Booker T at number 21, which I might be wrong, but was it 20 or 21? It, I'm pretty sure this is like the same exact number you had a surprise entered at in the 2011 Royal Rumble, but it might have been 20, I forget. But point is, got Booker T in there, nice little surprise. We had Damian Priest, Montez Ford, the return of Edge, which I was very excited about, uh, the United States champion Austin Theory. Omas, Braun Strowman, Ricochet, the return of Logan Paul, and at number 30, the return of the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes. So those were your 30 participants. Obviously, the big thing to uh, point out here is no Dwayne The Rock Johnson at all on this show, not in the Royal Rumble, not in the aftermath of the main event, and it looks like we are officially not going to be getting The Rock at WrestleMania. I mean, listen, there could be a big surprise on the road to WrestleMania. You never know, but if, if The Rock was going to be at Mania, I truly think he would have been there last night. And listen, I'm fine with it. As I talked about in all of my videos uh, leading up to the Royal Rumble, whether it was The Rock, whether it was Cody Rhodes, I was going to be happy either way because I was down for both matches. We're getting Cody Rhodes. I'm all in. No Rock, you know, no problem. Cody Rhodes is going to be great. I was surprised that we didn't get The Rock. I really thought this was going to be the year, but I mean, I guess it's just not, I guess it's just not meant to happen. I guess it's always just going to be a dream match and I guess never say never, but it just doesn't look like it's going to be happening this year. We get Cody Rhodes winning the Royal Rumble and new face Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. So all fine there. No, no complaints from me. Like I said, uh, Cody and Roman, the buildup is going to be great. Uh, the match at Mania is going to be great. And we're going to talk about that match and the whole Sami Zayn situation a little bit later when we talk about the main event, but some things to discuss from the Rumble match that, you know, uh, were notable and just overall, like I said, I very much enjoyed this match. I know, uh, some people said it was a little rushed. I feel like it felt rushed, uh, because there was only a 90 second interval and the, the walkway down of the ring, obviously being long takes up 45 seconds of that. So it did feel like, you know, guys were just kept coming and coming and coming instead of having that real break in between. I would have preferred a two minute in between, uh, each entrant to give it time a little, I'll give it a little more time to breathe, but it is what it is. That's my only really knock on the rumble match. So really the, the men's one, like I'm looking at, you know, everybody that came out refreshing my memory of things that happened here. And I really can't pinpoint like, uh, you know, that's not what I would have done. This is not what I would have done. There is two things that I will talk about that I have questions about. But then again, I also feel like I have good answers that explain at least to me why these things went down the way they did. And one of them being the Rey Mysterio situation. Obviously, it was like I said, it was supposed to come out at number 17. No shows. Dominic comes out after wearing a Rey Mysterio mask. So obviously, we allude to the fact, uh, to the fact, excuse me, that Dominic attacked his father and uh, Rey is not going to be unable to compete in the Royal Rumble match. But I would have liked to, for them to clarify that on commentary. So it wasn't the whole time, like, is Rey going to come out and throw Dominic out at some point? Or is he going to come out at all? Like, I would have liked them to to clarify that i know some people were saying this was a 29 man rumble um but i didn't mind the fact that they like ruled him out of the matchup i just would have wished they clarified that on commentary because they didn't um and not saying this is like a polar opposite 
um, or polar similarity, I should say. But in 2008, when uh, Finley rushed the ring to save Hornswoggle, he came out early uh, before his entry. And then because of that, he was disqualified from the Rumble match and never actually entered the Rumble. So technically, the 2008 Rumble would can be considered a 29-man you know, Rumble in itself. But it's because they actually clarified that Finley on commentary was disqualified from the match. I would have liked to see them say, you know, Rey Mysterio is unable to compete. But besides that, the story that we got coming from it, I did like, does look like we are heading towards Dominic versus Ray at WrestleMania, which I'm all fine for. And then Cody Rhodes coming out at number 30 and winning. I was not a fan of Cody Rhodes being the last entrant. I, I really did not want to see number 30 win again. Cause it just, it does, it's not that it makes the whole match feel pointless, but like we just got Brock winning at number 30 last year and Cody just coming back at 30 just seems to uh, like on the return and winning. It just seems too like coincidental. I don't know. I just number 30. I would have liked to see Cody come out honestly early and be one of the Iron Man's, just like Guther and Sheamus were in this matchup. But I got to be honest, I, I'm not going to knock it too much. And I put this on Twitter, and I, I honestly think this may have been what they were doing. You know, there was so much talk over these last few days of Sami Zayn winning the Rumble. It's similar, even though I didn't think this, but everyone kept saying it. It's just similar to Daniel Bryan and, uh, and Batista in 2014, Daniel Bryan and Roman Reigns 2015. I honestly think that there was a, there's a possibility. I'm not saying it's definite, but I think there's a possibility that they decided to put Cody Rhodes at number 30. That way you already knew he was announced, so you knew he was coming. And that, that way he was the last entrant. And if Cody came out earlier and all the other announced participants had come out, all the major names, and uh, you know you were expecting, like, who's going to be number 30? Is it going to be Sami Zayn? And then when it's not Sami Zayn, fans get disappointed and then hijack the match. You know, you know what I'm saying? I think WWE may have saw all the buzz going around online and said, how do we go about, you know making sure fans don't hijack the match and turn on Cody Rhodes and maybe him coming out at 30 um, and saving, you know, the last two really unannounced. Uh, well, I think we had four unannounced spots before this match. Like pretty much everybody was announced for this matchup almost uh, by the time, you know, through the kickoff, they announced the street profits and alpha Academy, like edge Booker, Logan Paul, Cody Rhodes. I believe they were the only four that weren't announced uh, ahead of time. Correct me if I'm wrong. So I think that might've been a reason to try to avoid fan hijacking like all right everybody's come out the only guy who hasn't come out left is Cody Rhodes it's the last entrance so it's got to be him you know or it's just the other it's just the other case that I thought of of they just you know it's Cody's first match back let's not push our boundaries with him uh he was in there 15 minutes uh according to Wikipedia but that sounds about right and you know maybe they just wanted to ease him back into the ring because he's come back from an injury I don't know I think it might be one of those two things as to why Cody Rhodes came out at number 30 uh, instead of, you know, coming out earlier and being an Iron Man or just coming out, you know, even in the late 20s or early, you know, sometime in there and uh, winning this matchup. 30, I just wasn't a big fan of, but if that, if news comes out that that's one of the reasons why they went with number 30, um, then I, I, I can't say I disagree with it at the end of the day. That's a little gripe, but like I said, there's my two reasons uh, thinking about that. The Logan Paul ricochet spot was awesome. I know a lot of people don't like Logan Paul. I, I love Logan Paul. Dude, dude, this guy kills it every time he's in the ring. I'm happy to see him back. And it looks like we might be getting him and Seth Rollins at WrestleMania, which I love because Seth Rollins has nothing to do at WrestleMania. He's not going to fight Cody, uh, which is great. You know, I, I don't mind if we get Cody versus Rollins on, you know, an episode of Raw in the next couple of weeks or on the road to WrestleMania, whatever. That's fine. Um, But he's not going to face Austin Theory again. We've been there, done that multiple times. Who the hell is Seth Rollins going to fight? He's got nobody. So him and Logan Paul, yeah, let's go. That'll be a great WrestleMania match. They'll tear down the house. And that, I, I, I obviously it would have been a great match probably, but the whole Logan Paul, John Cena idea that was floating around out there that I think Logan Paul wanted, not really my ideal situation right now. I'd much more uh, rather see Cena in something else. And possibly, you know, with the way things are going, might uh, we might get that matchup with Austin Theory, which to me uh, should be a great matchup. And then that frees up other people. I think it's a great idea. Logan Paul versus Seth Rollins. Logan eliminated Rollins from the Rumble. I do think that will be coming back around and we will be getting those two men at WrestleMania. Other things that I think pointed out for WrestleMania here, of course, we got the Edge return in this matchup, um, which he didn't last long, just like not exactly how I did it in my fantasy booking video, but he came out, uh, he eliminated Damian Priest, eliminated Finn Balor, um, and then he was trying to eliminate Dominic, and then Balor pulled him over the top rope, and this basically just led to a big brawl up the entranceway um, until Rhea Ripley came out, and then Beth Phoenix came out behind her, tackled her down, and uh, basically, you know, we got the return of Edge, and we clearly see that the feud is not over yet so i do think we'll probably get maybe like a mixed tag match at elimination chamber edge and beth versus 
uh, maybe Dominic, honestly, and, and Rhea Ripley. Um, and then maybe they'll save Edge versus Finn Balor one-on-one -on -one for WrestleMania. But I do believe we will be getting some kind of Edge versus Judgment Day, um, you know, matchup in, in some case at WrestleMania. Finn Balor obviously being the uh, ideal, you know, opponent. He's not going to face Damian Priest. Uh, he's not going to face Dominic. Finn Balor would be the guy. So I do think that's where we're heading there. Uh, happy to see Edge back and uh, happy to see him possibly on his last uh, road to WrestleMania. Looks like we'll be getting Brock Lesnar versus Bobby Lashley get at WrestleMania. Obviously, we kind of already pieced it together uh, this week after Lesnar cost Lashley the match on Raw. And then, uh, you know, on SmackDown, Lesnar laid out Lashley as well. So it looks like we'll be getting match, num match number three at WrestleMania. I know some people aren't big on it. I wasn't big on their first match. Their second match, I, from what I remember, I don't really have any problems with it. Uh, talking about the Crown Jewel match from a couple months ago. Is it my ideal situation for Brock at WrestleMania? I'd say no. I prefer her, him and Gunther. But if Gunther is going to be facing possibly Sheamus, possibly McIntyre, possibly a triple threat for the Intercontinental Championship, that's way more appealing. Uh, even though Gunther versus Lesnar is a dream match, let's be honest, how much is Lesnar really going to do? I don't think it's going to be any better than a Gunther versus Sheamus match, which is one of the best matches of 2022, or possibly Gunther versus McIntyre, whatever situation they want to go with. So besides that, you know, what else is there for Lesnar to do? And especially Bobby Lashley, you know, if, if he's not facing Lesnar, then Lashley pretty much has nobody uh, to uh, fight at WrestleMania. So looks like we'll be getting those two men going at it again. And uh, all I can hope for is that they add some kind of stipulation on it, even though I'm pretty sure they did now. I'm thinking about it um, at Crown Jewel. I might be wrong, but make it a no holds bar. Just go beat the shit out of each other for, you know, six, eight minutes and just tear down the house at WrestleMania is all I can ask for. Um, but other stuff here, man, I think that's the, like the bulk of like the, uh, WrestleMania related stuff, uh, coming out of the rumble, um, Gunther being the Iron Man, I loved, um, and I do think, uh, him and Sheamus was a great choice for number one and number two. Like I already mentioned, I do believe we may be heading towards a match number three between those guys at WrestleMania. And I'd love to see, uh, McIntyre involved as well, possibly in a triple threat matchup remains to be seen. Uh, Karrion Kross was very surprised he got eliminated in four minutes. I, I don't know, you know, I, I, I. I'm not saying Karrion Cross is the best in the world, but I think a lot of people just are just rag, just rag on Karrion Cross. This guy sucks. This guy sucks. I don't see it. I think he's got a good look, good talent, all that stuff. But um, it is what it is. He, he got tossed in four minutes and was defeated the night before uh, by Rey Mysterio, which I forgot to mention that reports came out today, the, uh, Sunday, the day I'm filming this, um, that Rey Mysterio evidently was injured on SmackDown. I don't think it's a serious injury, but that was why he, uh, that's why they did the angle in the Rumble anyway, uh, because he wasn't able to compete. So is what it is. But besides that, I think that's pretty much everything um, noteworthy from the Royal Rumble. Gunther versus Cody, great final two, number one and number 30 going at it. And they went at it for what felt like, you know, not a full, maybe not a full 10 minutes, but definitely close to it. I uh, love that they gave him some time to just exchange it. And obviously, I, you think you pretty much knew Gunther wasn't going to win, but it was nice. You know, they teased it a couple of times and uh, Cody came close a couple of times. So just a nice back and forth there. Great final two. Cody Rhodes, of course, ends up winning and is going to WrestleMania to fight Roman Reigns for the Undisputed Championship. Couldn't be happier. Um, I thought it was a good rumble, man. I know some people were disappointed, but me, I thought it was a good matchup. Good winner. They got the winner right. That's all I can say. Um, it's not like, you know, people were... I know, I know like, I wouldn't have would have been complaining if The Rock won, but I know a lot of people would have been upset if The Rock came out and won this match. So, you know, Cody Rhodes won, and I don't want to see anybody turn on Cody Rhodes because of Sami Zayn. We're going to talk about that later. But Cody Rhodes back wins the Rumble, and going on to WrestleMania to dethrone Roman Reigns for the Undisputed Championship. We had the Mountain Dew Pitch Black match, Bray Wyatt versus LA Knight. This went like five minutes. It was very short. Um, You guys know what it looked like. It looked like a neon rave fest out there. And I gotta be honest, like, I didn't hate it. I didn't hate it, honestly. There wasn't, like, any super over-the-top supernatural stuff going on, which is what I was afraid of. Um, Bray Wyatt was vulnerable in this matchup. He wasn't indestructible until he put that mask on post, uh, match. And then we got the whole little, uh, you know, fi finish afterwards to talk about, but it did not go long. Bray, uh, caught LA Knight at one point with his sister Abigail. And that was basically it. And, uh, I, I don't, I don't hate that. You know, this is what happened. You know, Bray needed to win this match. He couldn't lose his first match back and LA Knight's going to be fine. I, I th think if Stone Cold Steve Austin is wrestling at WrestleMania, I do believe, LA Knight, Austin Theory, John Cena, those are like your top three opponents in my eyes for Stone Cold if he is going to be at WrestleMania, so LA Knight could possibly be moving on to something big like that in the next couple months, he'll be fine from this loss from Bray Wyatt, but after the matchup, I was rolling, I don't know why this was so funny, but to me, 
But obviously, Bray puts this, like, mask on or whatever the case is. They brawl out to a certain part of the fans. And uh, Uncle Howdy's on this structure. It looked, I guess it looked like maybe a scaffold with a, a curtain over top of it. I don't know. But LA Knight's laid out. Bryce stands there. And Uncle Howdy's up there. And Uncle Howdy just basically goes, welcome to Jackass. And jumps off on the LA Knight. They crash through this platform. And fireworks go off. And I don't know why, but I found it hilarious. Maybe because we don't know who LA Knight is, and it was, or excuse me, don't know who Uncle Howdy is, and it, he was just there and was just like suicide mission. I don't know. I found it hilarious, and it completely took my interest away. Uh, not that it well, t- it completely took my attention away because I didn't have any interest in the Raw Women's Championship match anyway. Uh, no disrespect, but completely took my attention away. I was on Twitter uh, and Instagram just rolling at this thing for for ten minutes until the Women's Rumble started, but. That was that. Didn't overstay. It's welcome. I can't be mad. Raw Women's Championship, Bianca uh, Blair versus Alexa Bliss. Another match that didn't overstay. It's welcome. Obviously, the crowd didn't really care about this match. Neither did I. Bianca won, retained the title. Uh, They had a little Uncle Howdy, you know, uh, show, you know, a video or whatever it was afterwards, you know, tormenting Alexa Bliss in the ring. And then that was that. Nothing to talk about because... I barely paid attention to the match. I'm going to be perfectly honest because it didn't really matter. Bianca was going to win, no doubt about it. And that's exactly what happened. Uncle Howdy, I was hoping for a reveal, but you know what? This dive cracked me up. So I'll take it. Let's move on to the meat of stuff. Women's Royal Rumble match. All right. So your order of entry for the Women's Royal Rumble. We had Rhea Ripley at number one, Liv Morgan at number two. Very good one and two there. Obviously, they had a little bit of a stint as a tag team last year. Um, Not that that's like major history between the two. Um, but, you know, plus that got involved with the Judgment Day stuff. So they got history and just, you know, two of the top women in the uh, WWE Women's Division. So good one and two there in my eyes. Moving on, we had Dana Brooke at number three, Emma at number four, Shayna Baszler, Bailey coming in early at number six, B-Fab, which thank God she did not last long. I, I, I honestly can't stand Hit Row at this point. I tried giving them a chance, but they just, they suck. Uh, luckily, she got tossed in seconds by Rhea Ripley, exactly what should have happened. Uh, we have the NXT Women's Champion, Roxanne Perez, which I would have liked if she lasted a little longer. Wikipedia says 4 minutes, 34 seconds. Felt about that. I mean, she got eliminated by all of damage control, so, you know, you can't really hate, but I would have liked to see her last a little bit longer considering she is the NXT Women's Champion. I do think she'll be a uh, bright spot in the future of the uh, WWE Women's Division, but still nice to see her in there. Roxanne Perez, um, at number 9, we had Dakota Kai. Number 10, Io Sky, so the Women's Tag Champs uh, just, just coincidentally come out back-to-back. Uh, Natalia returning at number 11. I don't know how long she's been off television, but I think it might've been since September, October, something like that. Uh, Candice LeRae at 12. Zoe Stark coming in next, also from NXT, and she lasted, uh, what's Wikipedia guy here? 26 minutes. Sounds about right. Uh, Zia Lee, Becky Lynch in at number 15. Oh yeah, Becky Lynch and Seth Rollins coming out both at 15. Coincidence? I don't know. I think not. Uh, Tegan Knox at 16. Asuka coming in at 17, who came in rocking a very similar uh, look to, uh, I believe her name in, in Japan all those years ago was Kana. I'm not very familiar at all with any of her uh, previous WWE work, but obviously it was a very similar look. Very cool face paint, new uh, tights, new mask. It, it was very cool, and she made it down to the final few, which we'll talk about. Uh, Piper Niven returns. Not Doe Drop. They give her back her NXT UK name, which was very nice. I can now take her seriously again Piper Niven comes back at number 18 we had uh Tamina forgot she had a job coming in at number 12 or excuse me <laughs> number 19 uh number 20 we had the return of Chelsea Green who got tossed in five seconds and you know there was this rumor going around on Twitter that Chelsea Green's gonna have some whiny uh annoying Karen like uh, uh character I think Chelsea Green is above that. I would prefer to see the hot mess uh, Chelsea Green that she has portrayed on the Indies and Impact and stuff like that. But Chelsea Green's back. She's a very good wrestler. I'm not going to just shit on it right away because she just got tossed in five seconds. Even though I would have liked to see her. Honestly, if I... if I had my wife, she would have been in till the end, honestly. She would have came out earlier and been in, like, the final five just to put her over. But, you know, one thing at a time, it's her first night back. You know, her first run in, on the main roster was basically non-existent. Her first run in WWE is basically non-existent. So, I'm happy she's back. She's a great wrestler. Let's give it a chance. Chelsea Green at number 20. We had Zelina Vega at number 21. Raquel Rodriguez at number 22. Mia Yim at number 23. Lacey Evans. Michelle McCool, who got up from the front row to join this matchup, which, uh, you know, no problem there. Michelle's great. Uh, Indy Hartwell from NXT, big fan. Um, I was hoping, you know, she if she was going to be in this match, she was going to be closer to Candice LeRae so they can team them up at some point in the match. But 
did not happen. Hopefully, we get Indy on the main roster at some point. I'd love to see. If they need somebody to take the belts off of Dakota and Io, which they're going to at some point, Candice and Indy, I think, would be a great option. Uh, Sonya Deville was in this match. Shotzi, Nikki Cross at number 29. And then at number 30, botched, by the way. We didn't even get the countdown. The music just played. They botched the whole thing, which I thought was hilarious because screw this woman. Nia Jax. Nia Jax makes her WWE return at number 30 in the Women's Royal Rumble. This is the same company who was rumored, rumored, but I believe it, rumored to have said that Sasha Banks peaked. She just turned 31 years old this week, and this rumored, this company said that Sasha Banks peaked, yet here they are re-signing Nia Jax? Get the fuck out. The, the door's right there. Just go. Please leave and don't come back. I there is not one one person who wants to see that woman anywhere near WWE television. She is immediately where's the remote? I got I got to change the channel. There is not one matchup I am interested in seeing. There is not one promo I am interested in hearing. There is not one story I am interesting in watch being told. No. No, hard, this is the worst signing since Triple H has started re-signing people. This is the worst signing. Nia Jax adds zero to anything. Luckily, luckily, she did not last long. Every woman in the ring at that time eliminated her. And I wish they eliminated her for good, but they just released a t-shirt last night. So it looks like Nia Jax is officially back in the WWE. God help us. We went with Chelsea Green, which I was oh, nice. That's a good re-signing. Officially, you know, it was rumored, but like officially confirmed, she's back. She's not even in this picture. Nia Jax. I'm good. Anyway, I digress. So, a couple of notes here. Uh, Becky Lynch uh, did not last too long. She she got beat up or started brawling with damage control. As she came to the ring, they threw her over the announce table. She stood out for a couple of minutes, then she came back in. And honestly, didn't last too long. Bailey eliminated Becky, and that was... Uh, I think he, I think before, like right before Raquel Rodriguez came out at 22, I want to say. And I was surprised because between, you know, as I talked about my prediction video, it was between Becky and Rhea to win this matchup in my eyes. So once Becky left, I was like, oh, like I expected her to be in the final four, which she was not, or at least the final two or something like that. But she wasn't. I wasn't complaining. You know, let's, let's get new women in the spotlight. I'm down. New women in the spotlight. That's what I want. But. I was just, it took me by surprise, and it became very clear-cut. I was like, all right, Rhea's got to win this now. The only other person, well, I, you know what? There was a couple dark horses in the ring as we started getting towards the final few, and that was the final few, and that's Liv Morgan. Dark horse. I know these people were probably not going to win, nor did I expect them to win, nor I, do I know what stories they would tell for them at WrestleMania to make it feel like WrestleMania, but Liv Morgan was a dark horse. Asuka was a dark horse. Raquel was a dark horse, but besides that, it was clear-cut Rhea Ripley to me, and that's obviously, like I said, what ended up happening. Um, I'm, I'm trying to think of what other notes here to really talk about, but there wasn't too much outside of the Oscar thing, outside of the Becky thing. I already talked about, you know, Chelsea Green and stuff like that. I, I can't say it was a bad Rumble, though. You know, it was good. I enjoyed it. Um, it was it the best Women's Royal Rumble? I, I gotta be honest. I, I really don't know. I don't have them all on top of my memory. Uh, this was definitely the one that had the least legends, which I appreciated. Uh, you know, WWE, or I should say Triple H, has re-signed um, and hired... Uh, a lot of, you know, old women that got released, um, that are still have tons of potential like Emma and Mia Yim brought back Piper Niven for the first time in months. So we had a lot of, uh, newer faces in this matchup, which was nice. It really wasn't one of those legends rumbles where we got the Bella twins coming out and Tori Wilson for the fourth time and Molly Holly for another, like no disrespect, but like, <clears throat> excuse me. You know, we've been, we've been there, done that with these women's rumbles where they're very legends heavy. Um, so I, I appreciate that this rumble is very raw and SmackDown heavy. Two or th excuse me, three NXT entrants. Um, we got Chelsea Green in there, re-signed, which is going to be a great uh, addition to the women's roster. Michelle McCool was the one legend in here. And then unfortunately we got Nia Jax at the end. But overall, like I said, I thought it was a good rumble. We came down to Asuka, uh, Liv Morgan, and Rhea Ripley. They were all out on the apron, which was a nice little spot here. Asuka went to hit the, uh, it was Blue Mist, I believe, on Rhea Ripley. She ducked, she hit Liv Morgan. Rhea ends up knocking Asuka off. And then Rhea and Liv, the final two, the woman who started the matchup, end up ending the matchup, even though they were just on the apron. They didn't go back in the ring and, you know, go at it for a few more minutes. Uh, but Rhea was hanging on, you know, skidding the cat, uh, you know, feet, trying to make sure her feet don't hit. 
uh, basically rises up and catches Liv Morgan like a Hurricane Rana type, uh, you know, position and flings her off the apron. Great spot to end the matchup. Very creative. Something that, you know, we haven't seen before to end the Rumble matchup. So Rhea wins the Rumble. 110% the right winner. Um, and I I'm very much looking forward to seeing, um, you know, where she goes. I as long as she walks out of WrestleMania with a title, and I say with a title, um, I'm going to be happy because the rumor going around online, rumor, not a spoiler, rumor, that she may be challenging Charlotte Flair for the SmackDown Women's title at WrestleMania, which takes me by surprise. As we've been talking about, it's Rhea Ripley's got to win the Raw Women's title at WrestleMania by either defeating Bianca Belair or if they put the title on Becky beforehand. She can beat Becky at WrestleMania because it seemed like we were going to be getting uh, Bianca versus Charlotte at WrestleMania. Now, again, this is just a rumor. That very well may be the case. But um, if we do get Rhea and Charlotte, I mean, we've been there, done that multiple times at WrestleMania a few years ago. And then, of course, they feuded, you know, I believe 2021 as well for the Raw Women's title. Um, It's not the match. I really don't want to see the match, you know, to be perfectly honest. But I guess at the end of the day, as long as Rhea walks out of WrestleMania with a title, I'm going to be happy. My preferred matchups are either Rhea versus Be Becky, like I said, or Rhea versus Bianca. But if she faces Charlotte, all I could hope for is that um, she walks out with the Raw Women's Championship. And that's uh, that's going to be interesting. Or excuse me, the SmackDown Women's Championship. Because that's going to be interesting if that happens. Because that, I think, kind of opens up the Raw Women's Championship. Because it's not clear cut what we're going to get for that right now. It could be Asuka versus Bianca, which I would love to see Asuka dethrone Bianca. I don't really want to see Becky versus Bianca for, uh, I think, a third time, but they might have done more. Obviously, they did Mania, SummerSlam. I don't know if there was any matches on Raw or anything. But, um, you know, it obviously would be a great wrestling match, but we've been there, done that as well. So, I don't know. I, I guess the women's title matches are still a little bit up in the air for WrestleMania, but the right person won the Women's Royal Rumble. That's all I can say. And um, it was a good match for what it was. I'm happy Rhea Ripley won, and uh, she's going to WrestleMania hopefully to walk out with a championship Alrighty, let's get into the main event the undisputed wwe universal championship match roman reigns versus kevin owens Sami Zayn only out there with roman reigns usos and solo sokoa staying in the back obviously paul Heyman was out there but the rest of the bloodline in the back this was Sami Zayn's night to prove himself for his final test to join the bloodline uh overall good matchup here uh you know wasn't i don't think it was their best matchup they've ever had but then again it's been a while since I've seen a Roman Reigns versus Kevin Owens match one on one, but for what it was, I thought it was a really good match. So it doesn't matter if there's their best match. But but what to dive into here? Near the end of the match, the referee uh, ended up getting laid out. I'm not gonna go piece by piece of everything that happened because you guys already know what happened, um, and I'm just here to give my take on it. But obviously, we had Sami Zayn getting Reigns a chair, kind of hesitated, almost cost Roman Reigns uh, the undisputed championship. In the end, Roman Reigns after slamming KO twice. On the steel steps, which was nasty bump. Uh, Roman Reigns ended up, I think, hitting his third spear, second or third spear on Kevin Owens and retained the Undisputed Championship. After the matchup, my God, my God, this was pro wrestling cinema. Put this in a movie. This was awesome. We had Jay hitting the ring, Jimmy hitting the ring, Solo hitting the ring. They're beating the piss out of Kevin Owens. They put the chair on him. Solo Sokoa uh, backs it up in the corner, crushes Kevin Owens' head. They're beating the hell out of him. Roman Reigns breaks out the handcuffs, gives them the Usos. They handcuff Kevin Owens to the top rope or middle rope, whatever. I believe it's the top rope. And they're all taking shots at him. I, they, the, he ate like 10 super kicks from the Usos. And then Roman's about to hit Kevin Owens with a chair. Sammy stops him. I'm, I'm going to breeze through this because you guys obviously know what happened. I want to dive into the, you know, where I think everything's heading. Uh, Roman gives the chair to Sammy. Sammy won't do it. Eventually, Sammy Zayn hits Roman Reigns in the back with a steel chair, and we officially get the blow up of Sammy Zayn and the bloodline. The pop in the Alamo Dome, my God, was it loud. That was awesome. It was thunderous, and it came through great on pay per view. They show Jay. He's like, what the hell are you doing? He's upset. He can't believe Sami Zayn did that. He called him his brother. And then Jimmy super kicks Sami Zayn and Jimmy solo. And then eventually Roman Reigns beat the hell out of Sami Zayn. And my favorite part of this entire thing 
was Jey Uso. He could not beat up Sami Zayn. He was torn. He had to exit the ring. He was frustrated. He just called Sami Zayn his brother on Monday. He couldn't do it, man. He could he could barely watch them beat the hell out of Sami Zayn, and he had to leave the ring. That was my favorite part of this whole thing. Sami hitting Reigns with the chair was one thing, and then leading to the beatdown. But my God, Jay, I thought that was such a good touch and just, it, to me, is the bigger part of this story. So after what was an incredible segment, one of, if not the best ending to a WWE pay-per-view ever, it was great. Storytelling at its finest. You know, real quick, everyone talks about what's the most important thing in wrestling. Is it the moves? Is it the, the atmosphere? Is it this? Is it that? Storytelling. What is the most popular thing in professional wrestling right now? This storyline, storytelling, storylines, long-term booking, all of that is more important than anything. And it reigns supreme, no pun intended, right here. That is why this is the hottest thing in professional wrestling is this story. I love stories. Story, creating an atmosphere, my favorite part about professional wrestling I hope we get more stories like this, you know, for years to come under Triple H, as long as he is still writing the show. But just just a beautiful way to end the show, a heartbreaking, beautiful way to end the show. But let's talk about let's talk about everything else, man, because I could sit here and rave about this over and over again. But the hot topic on last night, uh, honestly, over the last week and especially today. Sami Zayn, oh, he's got to be the one to beat Roman Reigns. He's they got to do something. Sami should face Roman night one and Cody night two. Sami, he's got to, you know, they've got to do something with Cody. He can't beat Roman. It's got to be Sami Zayn. Listen, here's my two cents. Sami Zayn is not facing Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. This storyline started with Sami Zayn and the Usos, specifically Jey Uso, and what have they more focused on recently? Jay and Sammy. Look at some of the big parts of this storyline. Survivor Series. Jay, the last one to embrace Sami Zayn into the bloodline. This past Monday on Raw, Jay Uso defends Sami Zayn. Sammy teams up with Jay Uso to retain the tag titles. Sammy looks down and gives those tag titles a look. Jay Uso walks out on this. The bigger story here is Sammy and Kevin Owens versus the Usos at WrestleMania. And I don't want to hear, no, this is too hot for a tag title match. This is too hot for a tag team match. These are the same mother effers who have been crying for years that WWE doesn't focus on tag team wrestling, that WWE doesn't focus on the tag team titles. They're unimportant. We have the most important tag team match, tag team title match possibly ever at WrestleMania approaching us. And no, it's not good enough. Sammy was never going to beat Roman Reigns. He was never going to face Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. He was never going to win the Royal Rumble. That is not... Sammy said it himself in the Ariel Hawani interview the other day. He wasn't even on TV with Roman Reigns till two months into this program. What was it Montreal in August? Which is very coincidental because we were heading to Montreal in a couple weeks for the Elimination Chamber. This thing started with Sami Zayn and the Usos, and it's going to end with Sami Zayn and the Usos. Roman Reigns, obviously the head of the table, the leader of the bloodline, very pivotal part of the storyline. But at the end of the day, when you break everything down, it's Sami Zayn versus Jey Uso, and, and then Jimmy and Kevin Owens, and that is WrestleMania right there. And I really, really hope people do not turn on Cody Rhodes, who was red hot, last year just like Sami Zayn is now and Cody coming back last night winning the Rumble is still hot. I really hope these these freaking flash in the pan, you know, just uh, raving about the hottest thing whatever you want to call them fans, don't turn on Cody Rhodes just because they're not getting Sami Zayn versus Roman Reigns. You and then pe there's people out there saying, "Oh, we'll give us Sami Zayn versus Roman on night 1 and then Cody versus Roman on night 2." You so you're telling me you want Sami Zayn to defeat Roman Reigns for the Universal title on night one, and then Cody Rhodes can beat Roman on night two, you're completely devaluing Cody Rhodes if you do that. You can't, you cannot do that. If you're, if Roman was going to wrestle on two nights, it was going to be against The Rock on Saturday night, and then Cody on Sunday, and he was going to beat The Rock. He can't beat, Sa you guys are going to be pissed if he beats Sammy at WrestleMania if that were to happen, and it's not going to happen anyway. Roman needs to wrestle once at WrestleMania, and it's to lose to Cody Rhodes in the main event of WrestleMania Sunday. And earlier in that same show, Sammy and KO winning the tag team titles 
get against the Usos and the Bloodline loses it all at WrestleMania. That is the end of this story. Not Sami versus Roman Reigns. I love Sami Zayn. This has been the best work of his main roster career. This storyline has been some of the best the best WWE storyline since the Yes Movement in 2014, and that wasn't even all the way planned. I I get it. People are hot on Sami Zayn. They they think that's the hot thing. That's what they should go with. Oh, they should have went with Sami Zayn. Please do not turn on Cody Rhodes when he has been this been the guy this whole year. Last year, people were calling for Cody to, Cody to be at Roman at SummerSlam. Cody got injured. Didn't happen. Now we are here. This, everyone wanted Cody to come back and win the Rumble. They were like, no, not The Rock, not The Rock. Now suddenly Sami Zayn gets even more hot these last couple of weeks and everybody wants Sami Zayn. We're not, they're not switching up the story. And not for nothing, but if Sami Zayn was facing Roman Reigns at WrestleMania, then you just screwed the Usos and Kevin Owens because we've been leading this tag team title match the entire time since the beginning of this story when it really started to pick up. So if Sami Zayn were to fight Roman Reigns at WrestleMania, now you leave the Usos hi- hanging, uh, hanging out to dry and Kevin Owens with nothing to do. It makes no sense. You, it, what I already said is exactly what should and needs to happen. Roman Reigns versus Sami Zayn at the Elimination Chamber in Montreal in three weeks. Roman obviously retains. We'll get a sure great match and another great segment. And it'll be great, just like last night was great. And then at WrestleMania, the bloodline officially crumbles. Roman and the Usos lose it all. Kevin and Sami defeat the Usos to become the tag team champions. And later that same night, Cody defeats Roman Reigns to become the undisputed champion. I love Sami Zayn just as much as the next guy, but please stop crying Sami Zayn is not fighting Roman Reigns at Wrestlemania he was never going to and they should not have him face Roman on one night and Cody the next because it completely would devalue Cody Rhodes defeating Roman Reigns if he were to lose the night prior stick to the plan Sami and KO versus Usos Cody versus Roman there's my rant because everybody's just not I don't want to say everybody but there's just a loud minority online that's all Sami should have been the one Sami should have been the one they got to do something stop you, you didn't get a lot of people were going to be mad if the rock showed up i wasn't going to be but i think the majority seemed like they were going to be mad if the rock showed up he didn't show up you got cody rhodes cody versus roman is going to be great it's going to be one of the best wrestlemania matches of all time and they are going to sell it like a million bucks on the road to wrestlemania i don't know what else to say but that is my uh review of the royal rumble we are going to be making a ton more videos obviously on the road to wrestlemania a lot to discuss uh we probably will be making a video later this week talking about uh some potential what the potential match card is looking like like right now for wrestlemania we'll see i'm still uh putting together some video ideas to uh lead us into elimination chamber and whatnot excuse me so remains to be seen but let me know what you guys think on the royal rumble down below in the comments, let me know what you guys think of Cody winning. What do you guys think of Sammy and KO versus the Usos of WrestleMania? Give me the whole nine in the comments section. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. More videos to come. Of course, as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, every single No Nation Wrestling video is available on audio platform down below in the description. So go check them out. Thank you guys for checking out this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.